Out of the slide. Yep. Got the kill. 28 <laughs> kills for Gaffan. And they are at championship point. One more. For almost 50 years, the Grand Island Central Catholic Volleyball Program has been the most decorated sport in school history. At the age of 22, Coach Sharon Zavala adopted a program in its infancy and reshaped it into the pride of this small school in the middle of Nebraska. With 34 state appearances, 9 runners-up, and 11 state championships, Coach Zavala and the Crusaders turned this struggling program into a legacy committed to excellence. Allison Janovic. The coach is Sharon Zavala. The assistant coach, Mary Janke. Scene 14, take one with Coach Zavala. Marker. Okay. Okay, so let's just go ahead and talk about before you were the volleyball coach here at GACC. So, what brought you to Central Catholic? I was a senior at Kearney State College at the time. And I was gonna graduate in December of 74. And uh, my husband was teaching at Northwest, so I said, I'll meet you at the district volleyball at Lexington, and then you catch a ride, and he was gonna ride home with me. So I get there for the first game, because uh, I get out of class early, so I'm there early. I get to watch number eight, Central Catholic, play number one, Broken Bow. And I watch Central Catholic girls come out of the locker room, there was only about eight of them, and they didn't come out together. They kind of just walked out, and they got trounced. They really got trounced. And um, I remember saying to my husband, I would never coach at that school. And then a month or two later, I'm signing a contract to coach at that school. So never say never. It's never say never. I didn't pick volleyball. It kind of picked me. I had refereed for money my senior year, so I got to be around the game. And I, when I refereed, I watched coaches a lot, how they and how girls responded to them. And it seemed like at, back in those days, they had like retired men's basketball coaches coaching volleyball, and they would just yell at the girls all the time. And I just saw the girls kind of crumble, and I thought, oh man, I, I, I don't think I could do that. So I think I gained a lot of experience as far as insights by referee in a year. The head coach at the time became my assistant, and that's only because I was hired to be her assistant. But she says, you've at least, I had never even seen a volleyball game, and they made me head coach. You at least know the sport, so let's switch. I don't want to be head. So I, that's how I became head, is because the head coach did not want to be head. I went out in the hallways to try to recruit girls. And the first girls I went after were the cheerleaders because I felt they were the best athletes in the school and they had the most coordination. And I thought they would be the easiest to teach to, uh, to teach the skills to. And um, so I got a couple of them come out and actually they picked it up pretty fast. With the program in its infancy, newly recruited cheerleaders turned volleyball players and a change in the coaching staff Success for Central Catholic didn't appear overnight. Unlike today, state appearances were a rare sight in those early years. It took about five years. Um, I think our first five years, well, the third year we made the district finals. Fourth year we make the district finals. It was the next year that we made the state tournament for the first time. I remember a little bit of it. I remember, think, I think the day before I had a migraine and it was in Kearney and we lost in the semifinals to the eventual state champion. But I also was asked to do a linesman for a state final game. And I was so nervous. I was more nervous for that than I was coaching just because um, just don't want to miss a call. It was the first time I ever did a line 
Hard work and dedication by players and staff eventually led to the school's first state title. It was an exciting time in the program's history, and Coach Zavala thanks a few people in particular for this historic win. It was pretty exciting. Mrs. Howard was my assistant coach at the time, and her sister was playing, Mary Brand. And um, I just remember that the year before, I had started open gym volleyball. And I might have been the first coach in the state to run an open gym. So every day for an hour, I would have the gym open, and we would put up the net if they wanted it and give out volleyballs. And really only had two girls that showed up all year but those two girls made a big impact at that state tournament. The 1981 state volleyball title was the first of many to come for the Crusaders. Six years after their initial win, Central Catholic secured back-to-back -back championship titles. After another few years, the Crusaders again eventually took back their spot as state champs, and they made sure not to let it slip from their hands during a three-year championship run in 1992, 93, and 94. The first of these three wins against Ogallala in 1992 was easy compared to the four-year rivalry against SCOTUS, their biggest foe in the years to come. This four-year rivalry, however, would end in a draw, with Central Catholic and SCOTUS both sharing two state championship titles apiece. Let's meet the team of 30 wins and two losses, Grand Island Central Catholic. Flask C1 between Grand Island Central Catholic and Columbus SCOTUS. Central Catholic 30-2 and two on the year after defeating O'Neill in the first round and defeating Wood River in the second round. Columbus SCOTUS over Imperial Chase County in the opening round and over Auburn's in the semifinals to get here and to take on Grand Island Central Catholic for the third time this season. Reeves ready to serve and the Class C1 final is underway. That's Griner. Block over there by Val Week. And it goes out of bounds off Columbus Scotus, a point to Grand Island Central Catholic. Then field to Week again, and this time Week powers it home and a side out for Central Catholic. And as you see, it paid off. Great hit by Val Week. Game number one of the C1 championship game. We've had a few surprises today. We tried in the back. This is Reed, puts it over. Off the set from Reed, Jenny Binfield puts it over. Binfield, and the kill, the quick attack by number 15, Val Week. Val does a great job here, they're running that quick tempo. Just, she puts that ball, it's at the 10th foot line. That's how strong she is, and how high she's reaching to hit the ball over top of her. Violation has been called, that one was out, and Central Catholic is the C1 champion. We talked earlier about how difficult it was to beat a team three times in one season. Central Catholic didn't allow SCOTUS to beat them for a third time. So another undefeated team falls from the ranks, SCOTUS losing their first game of the season. They end on the note 27 and one, while Grand Island Central Catholic is 31 and two. We were down 11 to two in scores at the state finals. It was the third set. And that time you only went to 15 points and you had to serve to score. Uh, we were getting trounced. And I put Coach Tesmer's daughter in just for, because I was out of timeouts, for emergency subbing. So I just kept subbing her and this other girl in and out until they ran out of, uh, they could only go in three times then also. But anyway, she came up with a tremendous save. And all of a sudden we just clicked. And the next thing I knew, we ran off 13 points so fast and won for our third straight state championship. And SCOTUS, it had to be a hard loss because that was their only, that, I think, believe that was their first loss of the season. Now let's bring in head coach Sharon Zavala, who has a smile on her face. She's excited about this one. First of all, coach, you, were, you said last night you were disappointed with your defensive effort against Wood River. Are you pleased with the defensive effort tonight against SCOTUS? Yeah, we really did step it up a notch. We played much better defensively, kept our feet moving. We had a few breakdowns, but the kids refocused and came back and did a nice job. I had some really good players. We had just a little bit of everything. We had a good setter, we had height, we had outside hitters, good passing and good serving. And I think in volleyball, your middles establish your defense, but your outside hitters provide your, your most of your offense. While winning their third consecutive state title, Central Catholic has worked over the state tournament record book. They now have 
six state championships, tying for the all-time record. Tonight's victory was the school's 26th in tournament play, the best by any school in any class. Despite the success of the volleyball program, Coach Zavala was forced to stay strong in the face of adversity. A female coach during that time was not a common sight. My first years of coaching were not easy, not because of the kids, but because of I felt they really didn't want girls athletics to make it. And they certainly didn't want a female coach to make it. And I just felt like I liked coaching so much that that didn't matter to me. But I had a former student who was here the first year I coached, and he went on to become a head coach somewhere. And he's at a track meet one day, and this was, it's been quite a few years ago. But he said to me, he said, you know, when you first came to Central, I gave them three years to run you out. I took that as, not as a compliment, but my husband says, I think he meant that as a compliment, that they did, were not able to run you out. It, it was hard. I think the men that were my age and a generation above me, res they had been king of the hill. And they did not want to give up that title, king of the hill. And they had everything going their way. And um, they did not want things to change. And things were changing very fast. As the years went by, all of a sudden, you've got coaches whose mothers played. Um, or they've been around, the girls sports have been around long enough that it was an accepted part. It wasn't gonna go away, in other words. It was here to stay. Coach Zavala, a true pioneer of high school volleyball in Nebraska, was and continues to be an advocate for women's athletics and an example of winning against the odds. Now, let's fast forward, shall we? And it's match point and championship point for Grand Island Central Catholic and Brittany Hansen will serve. And Hansen serves the Crusaders up the C2 championship. Grand Island Central Catholic, the number one seed, delivers in game five and brings home the first championship to Grand Island Central Catholic since 1994. Sharon Zavala has um, it helped Nebraska be a volleyball hotbed. Kids love to play the game, they respect the game, and it's coaches like Zavala that develop that skill and that just that passion and that respect for the sport of volleyball. Sharon Zavala this season went over 800 wins. She now has 820 in her career, 146 losses. She is the all-time winningest volleyball coach in Nebraska high school history. Sokolowski with the swing there. Woe check again. Throw attack. That's a great hit. And it's over. What a play defensively by GICC. Aaron Sorahan will serve for the state championship in unbeaten season. Long. So Central Catholic completes the task in 2010. They go unbeaten 35-0 and win the Class C-1 state championship. Most recently in 2019, the Lady Crusaders defeated the Hawkettes of St. Cecilia after facing them three times before the championship game. Well, every time we played them, the first time we played them, they just outmuscled us. They just beat us up just because they were so physical. And so we knew we had to get a little tougher and had to um, do, do just a little bit better job because we knew they were going to come at us hard. And we got a little bit better the second time. The third time in district finals, it was tough. I don't know if it went five sets. I think it might have went five sets. And um, I remember Chloe having about 10 blocks and then we get to the state. And I remember going before that state final, the girls felt pretty confident because we'd almost beaten them the time before. And um, 
it's never good to beat a team three times and have to play them again. That, it's really hard to beat a team, a good team that many times. And I remember talking to the girls about that we want to bring home all the trophies. We want to win the state championship. We want to get the sportsmanship award. I always talk to the kids about, we, we, want, it, we want that sportsmanship award because that's, that's just really supporting your team in the right way. The worth of a state championship trophy is priceless, but the personal relationships that players form while competing with each other are timeless. Gracie Woods, for example, a freshman on the 2019 championship team, credits that particular win for helping her to compete during later state tournament appearances. Yeah, the 2019 championship team definitely helped tremendously. Just having that leadership from those seven seniors that year and then also making it all the way to the championship and having that experience at Pinnacle Bank Arena and Devaney with all those lights and the crowd and all the energy going on in that building, it really prepared me for the future years and especially this last year at the championship game. In addition to playing time for one young freshman, the impact that 2019 state win made reached as far as family ties. A young Carolyn Mazur watched her older sister, Katie Mazur, win a state championship. It sparked a flame, and she was determined to secure a championship of her own someday. Yeah, it was really fun getting to watch her win a state championship, but I think it definitely like motivated me like because I really wanted to win one too. Well, it's great to be able to bring you this one across the state right here on NET as we have two legendary coaches battling against each other for a state championship between the two. They have been in state title games 29 times, but have never faced each other for a title. And there is Sharon Zavala in her 45th year overall. Just this summer, she was inducted into the National High School Athletic Hall of Fame. A legend, Sharon Zavala. Championship point number two. 2010, the last time GICC won a title, and they won it again. Grand Island Central Catholic, the Class C2 state champs, and Sharon Savala has won 10 state titles. Another championship run seemed to be on the way for the Crusaders. But unfortunately, things didn't go as planned the next year. The team did not make it to the state tournament due to an upset against Adams Central at the district final match. I think with that loss by Adams Central, um, it shook like everyone, like just because we're expected to make it to state like every year for volleyball, like just, we just have a good program like that. So I think when that happened, we didn't like know how to take it. I mean, but we have to like move on, like, you know, we can't dwell on it for like forever. And I think that just made us even tougher and like stronger in the next coming years. That was definitely very disappointing. We knew going into our sophomore year that we had a strong um, group of kids coming back. We were younger, but we were also very athletic. So we were kind of unsure how the season would go, but we, we did very well that year. We, I think we only had two losses on the season or something like that. And it just didn't end up our way at the end of the season. And looking forward, we knew we were gonna have to work hard in the off season because ultimately that's where all the hard work happens and where you make gains and get better as an athlete. So we knew it was gonna take some hard work. It definitely made us like appreciate winning more and like just like appreciate the moment like when we did win a state championship and we did make it to state. This program, spanning the course of five decades, has seen a multitude of players excelling under the guidance of Coach Sharon Zavala. Some teams have been fortunate to have tasted victory by adding yet another championship trophy to the school's name. And the team of 2022-23 came into the season hoping to make their mark on the program's history as well. Growing up, I had always watched the GICC volleyball team and I knew it was a really special program and it was always something I really wanted to be a part of. So once I got to high school, I was just really excited to start going to practice. So growing up watching Central Catholic Volleyball, I always was really impressed with all the success throughout the program. Yeah, so growing up, um, I think it was my eighth grade year was the last time they won state. And just seeing that, just being around that was just, 
I just always looked up to the volleyball team and I knew I wanted to play. Starting from a young age, doing club, playing with the teammates that I even played with in the state championship was just a great experience for me and that work throughout the off season and growing up, I think that really contributes to the success of the program and the tradition here at Central Catholic. I think that's one of the main things that helps this program be so good. It really felt like from the time that I was a freshman that there was always a coach there that was trying to help me and make me better. And no matter the role that I had on the team, whether it was on the bench or just going in to serve, it really, they made you feel like I was there for a reason. And so when I got to my senior year and I finally did get my chance to play, it was really exciting and I knew that that I was there for a reason. For any program to succeed, there must be chemistry and friendship formed between teammates, which ultimately translates onto the court. This year, many of the Lady Crusaders felt the support and encouragement from one another, which made this team particularly special. This program is really special to me because it's always felt like everyone's had my back and everyone's gonna mess up sometimes, so it's really nice to feel the support from everyone else, even when you're not at your best. We were very lucky. Our team was super close this year. I mean, we didn't have drama. We only were supportive of each other. And we're all very close. We were a very close team. And I think that's why we did so well in this season, because we just didn't have problems. Like, we were all just super close, and everybody just wanted to help everybody succeed. This season, I'd say in the summer, when I realized how much chemistry our team had, I grew up playing with a lot of the girls, Carolyn, Maddie, and Hannah, and we all played ball together when we were young. And so even some of the underclassmen, just the way that we all got along, and then in league and team camp especially, when we won team camp, I just, in the back of my mind, I knew that we would be going to state, and I knew that we would be really successful if we could just keep doing what we were doing. I knew that it would be good. After last year's 31-3 finish, the team returned home empty-handed, defeated by the Warriors of Lincoln Lutheran in the semifinal match. With team morale low, the Lady Crusaders wrapped up their season with a third-place matchup, which also didn't go in their favor. I think coming into that game, we knew it was going to be a really tough game for us, the semifinals with Lincoln Lutheran. They're a very consistently good team over the years. And the outcome didn't come out like we wanted it to, so that obviously stung a lot for our team, and especially the seniors that year. And I think we let that sting get to us in the third and fourth place game, which is not really a great position that anyone wants to be in. So I think we let it affect that game. Last year's loss stirred a hunger inside the Crusaders. Even before the season started, Considerable time was dedicated during the summer to team bonding, as well as personal improvement. So as a team, we all went to weights in the morning, four days a week, and then afterwards we would go to the gym and we'd scrimmage and play against each other and we kind of got to know each other more so that we'd be more talkative and communicative on the court. And then we also went to UNK camps and we scrimmaged against other teams. And at nights we'd have volleyball league and again, scrimmaging against other teams and just hoping to get better. And personally, I would work on my hitting and blocking and my serving. Practices for the Crusader volleyball team were different this year. A number of upperclassmen showed considerable leadership, which trickled down to the rest of the team. One thing that I thought was really great this year, my setters would come in from the locker room, they'd get a ball and they'd go to the wall and they'd start working, all right? And the other players see that and they would pick up a ball and they would um, start warming up. Now, most teams I have to say, okay, let's start warming up. They want to sit and talk. But this team got to work right away. She hates it when people are late, which I think is definitely true. We're always, I feel like this past year, we were always like on time to practice. And if we were cutting it a bit close, she'd always make fun of us. She also doesn't like like tank tops in the summer, so. We've never worn tank tops, so. Do you know why that is? You know she you? just said they look bad. She doesn't like them, so. After we warm up, Coach Saval usually brings us over and she talks to us about what we can do better and just takeaways from past games and practices and tells us what we need to focus on. Then in the first half of practice, we usually just do drills and those drills are really geared towards the things that we need to do better. And Coach Saval really does a good job of figuring out what drills will help us get better in certain areas. 
In the second half of practice, we usually play games or six on six so that we can practice working together as a team and really building the chemistry. One thing that stood out to me at practice is how some people stayed afterwards to work on some extra things. I think that that's beneficial to the team when they get to work together with each other. Seeing the other girls work in the gym inspired me to go in after practice too, and I think that that's beneficial to me as a player and also to the team. In the first game of the new season, the Crusaders face the Vikings of Northwest in a tough rivalry match with a sweep, their first one of the year. From that point on, it was smooth sailing until a tournament hosted by North Bend Central cost the team its perfect record up to that point. So at the beginning of the season, we had a few ups and downs, but ultimately we started out strong. I think we were 10-0 when we got our first loss against North Bend. Going into that game, we knew it was going to be a tough game. North Bend Central is a great volleyball team, and we played them in the summer actually before that, and uh, barely, barely won in the UNK team camp. So it was going to be a close game. Against North Bend, uh, we had a rotation that we didn't match up well with. And I knew that as a coach coming in, that could be a problem. And um, it proved to be a problem. And uh, after that loss, we kind of just knew, you know, we got to take a step back and reevaluate ourselves and figure out, you know, where can we make changes and what needs to be changed or made different in our lineups. And I think Coach Savala does a great job with that. I knew I had to make some changes someplace and try to get, because in volleyball, you have six rotations and every rotation is like another whole setup. Um, who's gonna put the ball down. And so um, uh, they had such a great middle. And if we couldn't match up with her, it kind of gave her a free swing. We just couldn't size up with her and we couldn't seem to put the ball down. I don't think we had our best game anyway. Um, that's when Gracie kind of hurt her knee. I think that's when it first showed up. So I wasn't too disappointed in that, even though, I mean, we got beat right at the end. I don't know if it was 15, 13 or 16, 14. We felt like we could have won that game, even though we didn't think we played our best. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're all upset because it was our first loss, but it, again, it took a little bit of pressure off of us because we didn't have the pressure of being undefeated and like playing scared because we didn't want to lose. The next practice, we came back with um, our heads held high. We had a lot of season left and we made some changes and it, it worked out for us. The team rebounded after their first loss by winning their next 14 games, including a face-off against conference foe, Archbishop Bergen. The 23 volleyball season was well underway, with some players filling the roles, once held by last year's seniors. One of these roles was filled by Tristan Hedman, who played libero. Yeah, apparently there's some different ways to say libero. How do you say libero? Libero. <laughs> well, actually, seventh grade year, I wanted to try setting. And I set for the B team, because Carolyn is better than me. <laughs> After that, I think I went into libero. I think it was more just because I was short though. Yeah, I was nervous at first because it's a big role to step into and some big shoes to fill, but after a while I got a little less nervous and I just believed in myself. Tristan Hedman was just a good athlete. She'd always played right side or setter. I watched her in the summer and I just thought she'll, she'll be a great libero. She kind of had a little hitch in her swing as a hitter but her defense was, was the thing that she, and she's so competitive. And when she plays volleyball, she looks very gymnastic. And I think a libero has to hit the floor a lot. And she um, is so graceful. And again, she's a cheerleader. That makes them, I, I don't know, a little more coordinating, very, very graceful.
Archbishop Bergen was not the only occasion celebrated that night. It also happened to be Carolyn Mazur's birthday, and the Crusader faithful made sure to congratulate her on her special day. A victory against Archbishop Bergen boosted morale into Saturday when the Crusaders faced against their formidable opponent, the Warriors of Lincoln Lutheran. Expectations for this game were sky high after the outcome of last year's semifinal matchup. And then against Lincoln Lutheran when we lost, we were probably about the first team to take them to three sets. And so we, we competed with them um, and they had some tremendous players, so they went undefeated. So, I mean, they, they're very, very good. Um, I think we felt like we felt like defeated just because we like we tried so hard. We like battled like and they're a really good team. Like, you know, it wasn't going to be easy, like coming in like we knew that. But I think when we seen Mrs. Avala saying like it was OK, I think that's what made us like feel better about it. And. And if anything, that game just made us even more tougher and stronger throughout the season. We, I just remember Mrs. Zavala coming in to the locker room and telling us that was our last game we were going to lose. Oh, I said that? She said that. She said that. <laughs> well, I'm glad when I, my, what, what I say is, is the truth. I was really like fired up. I was like, we're not, we're winning state. I don't care what anyone says, but we're winning state because that game just set like a light bulb in our heads and we're like, yeah, we're going to get the job done. I, I felt like we competed so hard. And when you have a team compete that hard and they don't want to lose, then you've got a good chance. And I knew how good Lincoln Lutheran was. So for us to stay with them, it meant that we were pretty good if we could just put together every time. Everybody wants to always win. So when we lost, it was always a big loss. And we always just wanted to keep going and keep pushing through and focusing on the next game after. Anticipation grew as the regular season drew to a close. A senior send-off from the Crusader faithful recognized the talent and skill of the upperclassmen. The Crusaders would defeat the Adams Central Patriots that very night. Senior night recognizes the accomplishments of every graduating student on the team. And for Hannah Gallatly, her role as defensive specialist did not go unnoticed. So being a defensive specialist obviously will not get the praise of the game or anything, but um, just trying to fulfill that role to the best of their abilities is just the main, the main goal of it. But ultimately, I know playing that role is still a big part of our success as a team. And I think my teammates and coaches really preached that to me, helped me have that good confidence throughout the season. Hannah, Hannah was kind of a, a, a bulldog, you know, um, <clears throat> in a good way. She was feisty and she was like very determined. That's the one girl I think would never get scared in a game, never get scared because Hannah's just gonna compete. Avery was probably my most difficult girl to understand because she had so much natural ability, physically. And um, she would make uncharacteristic mistakes. And, um, and I think a lot of times is because her brain is wired kind of fast. And so she isn't one to, to, to be able to think about things. She just goes with her gut. And um, so sometimes she would make uh, mental mistakes. And by the end of the season, I just had to kind of let her go, just let her learn from her mistakes and not tell her about it because I think it made her feel bad that she wasn't pleasing me. I always felt that way. She thinks I'm not pleased with her. And so I didn't want to put that doubt in her mind. So we let her go and she comes up with a great, by the end of the year, she's playing great. So I think she was a girl I needed to release to the game. And so part of it was my coaching problem because I'm so, don't make mental mistakes. Maddie Wires. I always knew what I was gonna get with Maddie. 
And, and that is such a compliment because not every kid, kid, some kids have bad games, some good games. I always knew how her jump was. I always knew, she, but she passed the ball well and she always bettered the play and, and um, she didn't make a lot of errors. She was a good server, didn't make errors. And so you kind of need a person like that. She maybe always couldn't put the ball down for you, but she kept things in play. And that was important because then we could get it to our big hitters. Gracie was probably my most skilled player all the way around. Just, she could have probably been a setter too. She could pass, set, hit. I think what she brought to the team, her defense, she could cover so much with her arm span uh, defensively and she read so well that she provided Carolyn with a lot of good passes and she came up with some great defensive and she was strong with her hands. Good serve receiver. Uh, one thing, Gracie, after her knee injury, I almost think became a better leader. Not that she wasn't a good leader before, but I, I think it bonded her a little bit more with the kids because they knew they needed her. And she actually, she really kind of needed them too to help her along, but because um, she didn't always practice. So she's there watching practice when she wasn't playing. And sometimes you gain a lot of insight about things when you're on the sideline and you're not in the game and you want to be there. Yeah, so I, I think in some ways that probably matured her a little bit and made her a little bit more appreciative of, of everything. Not that she wasn't, but when it takes something like that, it just, it does something for you. So I really didn't know about much about Central Catholic Volleyball coming in my freshman year, but my brother, he knew about her program and like the successfulness that she had. And he just trusted in her and he was like, well, I want my sister to like try and play volleyball. Of course, Lucy was a project um, from early on. She was always scared, not very sure of herself. I'm over here like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I suck. Like, and I just remember coming into my first practice and I think like Avery Kelly was dragging me in. I was like, come on, come on. And I'm like, I don't know. You guys are too good for me. Like, but she was so great off of one foot. So we had to keep telling her that you're so good on the slide. And we're so lucky to have a setter that can set her what she does best. When she is on or when she is happy, she's contagious. She just has that contagious contagion about her that that's so good. She also turned me into the player I am now. So I'm, I just thank like my brother for trusting in her and Mrs. Walla doing her job to make me the player that I am today. After honoring the team's five seniors, the Crusaders and the Patriots charge into battle. Seeing my teammates get a kill would definitely get me more animated. Lucy, Gracie, Hadley, all of those big hitters, when I see them get a kill, I just get so happy. And I bring a lot of energy to the team, I feel like. So being able to get them hyped up is something I really like to do. I would think about my role all the time. I would think about what I had to do to improve and get better. I just told myself, like, it's okay if I mess up. Like, there's always the next play. I would say Lucy helped me be better because, you know, she's such a good middle and I would always see her and want to be like her. And like going up against her, if she was on the other side, then I had to be against her. So I'd work on like my defense with her and just having to hit around her like big block. <laughs>
The third seed Patriots don't stray too far from the second seed Crusaders as they meet up at the sub-district semifinal match hosted at Minden High School. This game, however, highlights the patriotism of Adam Central's volleyball team as the game goes into a grueling five-set heavyweight matchup. Well, anytime you play Adam Central, it's always going to be a competitive match. And we knew it was going to be another competitive match. We just played them the game before that, the previous game. So uh, we knew each other pretty well. And uh, going into that fifth set, you know, you always think first to five, first to 10, first to 15 you know, think that many increments in your head. And it did not start off that way for us. Our district is really tough with all of the teams, Minden, Adams Central. So when we were playing Adams Central and we were down zero to six in the fifth set, a lot of us were kind of nervous. I was, I was pretty scared. I was like, I just remember shaking. I'm like, oh my gosh. We're down zero to six and I'm thinking, um, we're gonna have to have a wild card. You know, you hate to go in the state tournament with a wild card, but um, yeah, it was zero to six and things weren't going very well. We just could not get out of serve receive. It was just a constant battle. And I just remember Ms. we're in the huddle, Mrs. Zavala's like, one point can change this whole game. You always have to instill in your player's mind that it's not over till it's over. And you have to just keep believing. And if you keep believing and you still lose, then you have nothing to worry about. But if, if you let doubt creep in, if you play scared, then you're probably beat. And then finally, we got a side out and Lucy just came on fire. It was amazing. And you know, I get three blocks in a row and we're like, yeah, yeah, like I'm hyped, you know, I'm hyped. And I get three kills in a row and I'm like, yes, 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 I'm like, yes. We had kills from Lucy, blocks from Lucy. She had those three great blocks and then all of a sudden she's hitting the ball down and, and we just come alive and you could see Adam Central kind of drawing a breath. And it's like tied up and I was like, yeah, yep, that one point changed the whole game. When Lucy started to just go on a roll, I think she had four blocks in a row and some kills. We had come back from being down many times before in the season. And so when we just had that momentum, there was nothing that could stop us. I, I looked at Avery and I was like, I was like, Avery, turn me up, turn me up, turn me up. I was just so excited. I was like, yeah, let's get this job done. I'm ready, I'm ready. Going into the fifth set, the chances of getting to state seem not so set in stone as in previous years. This game could easily serve as a reminder of two years before when the two teams faced off for the district final. Then, the Patriots would upset the higher ranked Crusaders. I'm always traumatized about that because, <laughs> yes, and I just, just always playing Adam Central, they're always going to put up a fight against us, like, no matter what. So, like, I'm just, like, going into this game and I'm like, oh, like, you know, like, we just got to, we got to do our part and then, then the game will start going on its own, you know? But I just remember, like, everyone just being, like, so down. And I'm like, we can't do this. This is what, this is, like, we're not this team. Like, our team is so much stronger than this, like, so much competitive. Like, we could do so much better. And I know Mrs. Avala trusted in us, too, because I just remember her being calm. And just Mrs. Avala being calm, I know, like, we can be calm, too. After the tough grudge match the day before, the Crusaders will need to gather themselves quickly to face the number one seed, the Whippets of Minden High School. And the prize for this victory is a chance to host the district final game.
hear the crowd when I play, but especially when you're serving, I think, is when I hear the crowd. But it, I don't think it affects me. I am usually pretty focused, I think. Maddie Schneider hadn't played the year before, but I knew she had great feet to the ball. She was a good passer. She had a great platform. She had just a great stance for, for passing, so that's kind of where she fit in. Um, she'll have a bigger role next year, I'm sure. And the first time we beat them, I think that took them back a little bit. Uh, they were young, and I always told my kids that they're young, so they're not going to have the experience that our team had. And I, I felt like our experience really helped us because they had some great athletes. But um, uh, again, we were a little bit bigger, a little stronger. Uh, I think we were mentally a little tougher. Experience and maturity would prove to be the most prominent factor in the Crusaders' win against the top seed team in the sub-district. The Crusaders have one more obstacle standing in their way. On their own home court, they will face a strong team who has every intention of spoiling their plans to achieve a 34th state appearance in 51 years. Platteview. part about being a setter would be knowing what type of set everyone wants and just like giving them like the same ball every time.
Two sets down, one to go. With Platteview struggling against GICC, the Crusaders make it clear in the third set that Central Catholic will secure themselves as the district champs and make it to the state tournament for the 34th time in the program's history. The Crusaders' hard work and dedication from preseason to district final finally pay off. They are state-bound once again. For most of the seniors, this year will be their third state appearance in four years, and it will be a special moment for them, as many childhood friends and teammates will come together to face off against the highest ranked teams in the state. Lucy Gaffon, however, doesn't have the connections that her teammates had acquired years before. Before becoming the strong outside hitter she's best known for, she too has to learn the ropes before finding her role on the Crusader volleyball team. I started playing club ball. Well, I played at Kearney first because Mrs. Avala knew Steph Brand. You know, she coached one of her. So that's where I started like doing club volleyball. And then we went to Lincoln just because Lincoln had like a better program and like Carolyn and like Gracie Woods, like all like played there. So then Kristen Mazur would like paid for me to like play and like travel. And she made sure I was at practices and stuff and would always give me rides like to um, club volleyball in Lincoln like twice a week or whatever. So I would say they really helped me a lot. You know, they helped me gain my ability in volleyball. And I really appreciate that. Like, they really like changed me, made me a better person, you know. With players like Lucy Gaffon, Gracie Woods, Tristan Hedman, and many more, the Crusaders would have to align with the stars of Kearney Catholic. With players like London Carnes, Avery Mandernack, and Callie Squires. Nerves are inevitable with such high stakes in the first round at the chaotic Pinnacle Bank Arena. I was definitely very nervous like before each game at state, but I just knew to trust my teammates and trust all like the training we've done. We put in so much work and I knew that we could win. Pinnacle is just so much like, it's just so much around you that's going on, you know? And then there's like the other games playing and I feel like just you like having your own game, it's just, feels so much better and like, you know, and everyone's more fo like focused on you, you know, like. You know, there's a lot of distractions when you make a state tournament and you could talk to basketball coaches and I'll tell you the same thing. So many distractions because you've got the media coming in, you got people filming your practice, um, interviews, uh, parents are all excited. So a, a lot of distractions and you have to just keep trying to refocus on, okay, Here's our opponent, and we had to focus on Carney Catholic, right? We knew that was our first opponent. Crusaders win the first set of the match. 
Kearney Catholic grows more competitive. The Stars put up a fight in the second set, hoping to turn the tide of the game. Stars fight hard in the second set, but the Crusader hunger and passion outweighs the desire of the Kearney Catholic Stars. Going into the third set, Central Catholic wraps things up shortly, as they usually do throughout the regular season. What could be a hard-fought battle adds up to another win on the Crusaders' record. However, a battle is sure to come. After getting knocked down two times, Minden is ready for the rematch they have been waiting for, and nerves for this game are ever-present, as always. I mean, I was a little nervous because, like, we've played them a few times, they scouted us, they know what we're going to do and everything like that. But also, we've done the same thing, and. We know what they're going to do, and we're just ready to play. Hey. Hey. Better lay down and stay down. Where I come from, we don't play round. Yeah, I'm the one. Even at my worst, I'm the best. Give my all till it ain't none left. Don't sweat, I'm the one. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one. Don't stop till I'm done. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one. It's a game you don't wanna play. Take chances, make it happen. Took all of my L's like practice. Bounce back to the top like magic. All you need is hard work plus passion. Everything I wanted, I imagined. Sky was the limit, so we blew right past it. The only goal is trying to go faster, we can't go backwards. So if you upset, just say that. You put it for yourself for the playback. I use success as my payback, so take that. We don't fabricate, cause it's fake, we just stay fast. Believe me when I say this. I really feel like the Crusaders caught Minden just lacking a little bit. Great serves by Avery Kelly. Three ace serves. You know, how many times do you see that? In one set, she's got three. Five in the set four from Avery Kelly. Have yourself a day, AK. We're not even done with the first set, Jack. And then Avery Kelly already has four ace serves. Crusaders now up 11 over the Whippets. Yeah, I'm the one. Even at my worst, I'm the best. 
best. Give my all till it ain't none left. Don't swear it, I'm the one. Tip over once again by the Whippets. Maggie Herbeck now blocked at the net. Lucy Giffon dug out once again. Camry ends it. Set number two. Minden ties it up here. One apiece here for Seth's Wolf. Be back for set number three between the number two seed, Minden Whippets, and number three, Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. Going into the third set, Central Catholic now knows the Whippets don't plan to give up easily. So they do what they do best, regain the momentum. Gracie Woods now, whoa, and just about, you know, half a foot away from being in, but yeah, you know. Point goes to Menden, now down three, Sloan back back into the game, so that's something to look out for. We get a stoppage of play here as Tristan Hedman comes off the court there, Jack, and that's not good for the Crusaders. Absolutely. Yeah. And just, she looks like in a lot of pain right now. An apparent injury towards the mouth is all we can say about that. And then you want to talk about Tristan when she chipped her tooth at the state tournament. I did not realize she had chipped her tooth. I was just drinking my water and we ended up getting the point and I just had my water go like this and Lucy jumped up like to cheer and I was tired so I didn't jump up <laughs> and she hit my water bottle with her elbow and then it hit into my tooth. I just remember I was so excited. I don't know who got the kill. I just remember jumping up like, yeah, yeah, I was so happy, like, yeah, 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 you know, like cheering for my team. And then I look to my right and I see Tristan on like the, the bench and like, she's like crying. And then I'm like, what the heck? And then she's like, oh, my toe, my toe, my toe. And I'm like, what? And I just seen her two chipped and I was like, what the heck? And I didn't even know it was me. It didn't really hurt, but I could just feel like the piece of tooth in my mouth. I was like, what is that? And it was my tooth. <laughs> I was so excited. I didn't even like feel like my body felt numb. Like, you know, like when I was jumping, like I didn't even know I hit her. Like, which I don't really know how it broke because it was rubber, but I guess she just was so strong. I don't, I must have been like that strong or something. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> when I saw her hand over her mouth, I actually thought she was going to throw up. I thought she had made herself sick because I felt like she was not, um, uh, herself that game. I felt like she had a lot of anxiety on the court. She's pretty hard on herself anyway. I think she was just already like kind of like going through like a little bit tough times and it just made it a little bit, it was like the cherry on top, you know, like made it a little bit worse. Yeah, she. I really felt like she had a lot of anxiety. So when I saw her hand over her mouth, I thought, okay, she's made herself sick. She's going to throw up. And then I saw the blood. And then I could, it started bleeding. And then I was just kind of freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I think I was just in shock. I was like, what just happened? I was like, Tristan, please don't be mad at me. I was like, please, please, Tristan, don't be mad at me. I was like scared. Uh, I just remember feeling so bad. I just didn't want her to be mad at me. <laughs> what she was, was she? Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think, I don't know. I was not mad. It was an accident, so it wasn't her fault. She was just cheering. <laughs> I think it just took a couple plays and after we got a couple points, I was like, okay, it's fine. And I was still a little shaky, but I think it was fine. Um, I credit her dad coming down from the stands and getting her, getting her calmed down and, and to let her know that the team really needed her. So she came right back in. She came in and, and Avery Kelly kind of uh, held her spot for her. And Avery hadn't played libero for for me, so um, she did she did fine. She came up with some good digs. Despite the unique circumstances the Crusaders are under, 
Coach Zavala, with her vast experience, has already been in an eerily similar situation just like this one. My first state championship, we had a girl that chipped her tooth into my setter's forehead. So I had two players that got hurt. She chipped two teeth. And I said, we won the state tournament that year. It's a good omen that you chipped your tooth because we won that year. As the end of the third set draws near, the team has to make sure not to let it slip from their hands. The score is close, but another set point is closer. Mazer, Lucy Giffon, kill and set number three. And that is huge for the Crusaders going into set number four. They take a highly contested set number three, 25, 23. Crusaders up two to one here. Going into the fourth, we'll be back from Pinnacle Bank Arena. Coming into this fourth set, Tristan Hedman appears to be ready to play for the Crusaders. point here for the Crusaders, up 24-20 here in the fourth set. Adley Hasselman, the all important serve, trying to send the Crusaders to the 20th state championship appearance. And that's how it ends. Maddie Camry puts it in the net. Your Central Catholic Crusaders are going back to the state tournament championship game against Gothenburg tomorrow at three o'clock after beating the number two ranked men and whippets in the four set 25-20. Once again, Trent Turk alongside Jack Kenna. Thank you to everyone that tuned in and have a good night. Thank you. The Crusaders have overcome two obstacles, beating a great team three times in one season and securing a spot in the Class C1 championship match. However, on the opposite side of the bracket, another resilient team awaits the Crusaders in one last winner-take-all game, Gothenburg. The championship game will be played at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, and any player in that environment will be nervous. It's time for the Crusaders to live up to their season motto, finish strong. I think we all were so nervous, but I was really confident in our team confident in our season and I think we all just stepped up over that nervousness and over the jitters and just knew that we we were so close and we couldn't let this slip through our fingers. So when we got to Devaney I'd say we really tried to stick to our pre-game routine so it felt pretty normal in that aspect but obviously there were still a lot of nerves there. Obviously I was a little nervous just being in the atmosphere that we are in. I feel like anyone is nervous before a state championship. I mean, it's like the biggest game of your life, the biggest game of your season. But I think we did a good job of using our nerves and just bringing as much energy as possible when we stepped on the court. So going into it, I was definitely nervous, but I had so much confidence in my team. A lot of us just had a lot of confidence together playing as a team. So I think we did have nerves, but we really used them to our advantage. After you get at, through that semifinals game, and especially playing Minden for, I think, the third time, uh, that was probably more of a nerve-wracking game than anything. Just playing a team that many times, it's so hard. 
but I think we just had a lot of confidence going into the finals and we just had each other's back and knew we were gonna get through it together and we just had fun out there. Good to have you with us at the Bob Devaney Sports Center for more state championship volleyball. We've got a good one here this afternoon. A team that really not expected to be here pulled off the big upset of number one against GICC, who seems like they're here every other year. Right, Gothenburg again. Big win over North Bend yesterday in the semifinals. They were down 2-0 and had a comeback. Momentum started changing in set number three, and they rode it and got here to this championship. Grand Island Central Catholic, this is the 20th time they have been in the finals. And actually, Coach Zavala is pursuing her 11th title. So two teams kind of from a different background, but are both here and both have the same chance to win the state championship. So here we go with the number five, Gothenburg Swedes, and number three, Grand Island Central Catholic Crusaders. There is Sharon Zavala, 1,150 career wins, the all-time winningest coach in Nebraska volleyball history. Started in 1975 for 20th, 2-0, 20th appearance <laughs> here in these state finals. She has won 10 of those. The first came back in 1981 in her very first appearance in a state championship match. Tristan Hedman. Ooh, tough serve. Dropped. The fun. Wow, oh, good hand by the fun. <laughs> and that'll do it in set one for GICC. The Crusaders take the first set from the Swedes with ease as if it were another regular season match. However, Gothenburg has something up their sleeve for the second set. Well, here we go, set number two in the C1 title game. GICC on top, one set to none over the Swedes. That goes off of the block, and another, that well, goes into the antenna, so a point for the Swedes to open up the second.
With the first couple of points in the second set, Gothenburg makes it clear that they do not want their season to be over just yet. the Swedes. Set point here. Hold it back in! It was going long! And the Swedes take the set! Losing even a single set in the state championship match can break a player's morale. Only a select few can overcome defeat and become stronger as a result. And this is certainly true for the Crusaders coming into the third set. going up two to one. Ace oh. back line. Traps it right on that baseline. Two service aces for Hedman. Set point. And she got it. Yep. Gaffan closes out set number three, and GICC has taken the lead two sets to one in this Class C1 state championship match. The Crusaders strike back at Gothenburg after they take the second set from them, but now it's time to take home the most important thing of all, the state title. As a coach, to keep one's composure with such high stakes might seem impossible, but Coach Zavala has been at her craft for a long time. 
I think Zavala is such a great coach because she just stays so calm and composed and it definitely rubs off on us. I don't know if it's like she just doesn't want to like, you know, I think if her staying calm would make us like, you know, stay, stay calm or something. I don't know if that's how like she works. She just she just very like, I don't know. Yeah, like, but there's like some parts like she like there's some times where she's always like, Oh, like, guys, come on, you got to pick up, like, your defense or something. But she's never, like, yelling, like, she's always calm. And I always wondered that, too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm over here shaking, and she's over here like, it's okay. Like, I'm like, uh. Even as an athlete, I never showed a lot of emotion. No. I, um, I think it's because my family thought it wasn't good for a girl to be competitive. And so I didn't want to appear to be competitive, even though I'm extremely competitive. So I kind of started that at a young age. And even when I played softball and stuff, uh, I would not want to show too much emotion. It's just, I internalize it, I guess. Four, tied at 14, we have had nine ties. I can believe that's just the kind of a match, you know, yeah. and, and both these teams back and forth, and we've they both kind of exerted themselves at different times, and early on has been close here. But this is it. It could be it for either one of them. Point for the Crusaders. They take the lead. And they're on a 3-0 run. And timeout called by Bryson Mulburn. That's his first timeout here in set number four. Obviously it's game point and we're all just so giddy and we know that we're gonna win. I was on the bench with Maddie Schneider and we were holding hands. We all held hands on the bench because that's something we used to do a few years ago when we'd be on the bench together, we'd all hold hands. So we kind of brought that back for the very last point. I just remember telling Avery like hit high, hit high. Tip, not down. And 
and the play was an out of system play so Carolyn wasn't setting me the ball and I think Tristan took the ball from the back row to give me an out of system set which is never a perfect set and my focus was just get the ball in the court. Championship for the Crusaders! Eleventh in program history and number eleven for Sharon Zavala. It just ended up landing right in the perfect spot in that back corner, and there's just so many emotions going on in my head. She hit it right in the per like that spot was perfect. Like the corner, that little corner shot, it was like a good shot. And I just remember, and then she got a kill, and I'm like. Oh wait, <laughs> we're state champs. I just remember like, we're state champs. And then I'm just like, we're just all oh, jumping, yeah. And every, and I really didn't want to like, if I'm being honest, I did not want to fall to the ground. Like I just didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to. But then I was like, so we're up. I'm like, okay, we're up, we're up. And then we're slowly like timbering. And I was like, uh, I'm like, oh, well, it doesn't even matter. We were obviously all celebrating. It was just so surreal. That feeling was just indescribable. It was just so surreal just seeing the light on everyone's face. It was super surreal. Didn't even feel like that was actually happening. And it took a little while to set in that we actually won a state championship. The feeling of just hugging my teammates and knowing that we finally did it, it was just amazing. As a coach, you always have the hopes that you can win, but so much goes into it at state tournament. It takes a little bit of luck and you have to have all the girls have a good weekend. Um, I think in general, just state volleyball, that whole weekend was just a lot of fun. Just any time we're down there, uh, just the memories you get to make with your friends. And it's not necessarily on the volleyball court, but off the volleyball court too. And just getting to spend time with each other and the car rides there and back, the long car rides, that was always fun with Miss Zavala and Mr. Zavala and their talks. Being with the coaches and the teammates and making those memories. I think that just lasts a lifetime and it's what you'll always remember. This group just had a closeness that was um, tough. It, that's tough to beat. And that final game, I just felt like everybody played so well. Coming into that game, I knew we were gonna win, but I just didn't wanna like jinx her in anything. But I just knew we were gonna win. And I think we like, we came here like this far, like to like finish like and we did and that was our like motto finish strong so we like stuck by that so after the game i was just super happy and i wasn't crying at all until carolyn came up to me and she hugged me and she just talked about how it's been so amazing to be a teammate and a friend with her and that almost made me cry that was probably the saddest part of the whole day just because i love playing with her so much and she's my best friend so it just felt so awesome, like, it just, it almost didn't feel real, like, I was just so happy, like, I was just full of, like, happiness, and I felt like <laughs> we were all just so proud of one another, and it was just awesome, like, to be able to have that success at the end of the season and really make our mark on the legacy of this program was a really great feeling for us, and hopefully we just set that great example for the younger girls coming up into the program. Hearing that I was going to get the jersey, it felt really good, and I'm really grateful that I got to experience that. It was really fun. I had great atmosphere. I would say some of my expectations for next year is that some of the younger players will be having to like step it up because we're losing a lot of seniors this year. But I think through hard work, we're going to come closer and be a strong team. During the season, all of the upperclassmen really helped me by taking me under their wing. But towards the end of the season, I recognized that Lucy and Carolyn were the ones that really helped me out a lot. And Lucy was always helping me be more positive and be more confident in myself throughout the season. And Carolyn always helped me on the court, knowing where I was supposed to be if I was unsure. Something that I can take from this experience is a team that works well together and overcome obstacles will be successful in the end. Coach Zavala has obviously built this program to be incredible. So everything was in place long before, but I'd say this program is so special just because of Zavala and her coaching methods, and she just brings on so many good assistants and just builds up players. And this program is also good because so many of the girls care so much about the sport. I mean, we all play off-season ball, whether it's in Lincoln or Kearney, we put in so much time in the winter to be good players. And then when summer comes and the season comes, it just all fits together so perfect. 
This team, I put a lot in, and I thought the coaching staff did such a good job. My assistant coaches were wonderful with the girls, and uh, I just felt like we were always on the same page. The coaching staff with me, and the coaching staff with the girls, and the girls with the girls. We were always seemed like we were on the same page, and um, uh, I had some great leaders, but those leaders also were good followers. So you have to be both. You have to be able to follow uh, to be a leader. Coach Sharon Zavala, the winningest high school volleyball coach in Nebraska, has managed to accomplish the unthinkable. In every one of her five decades, as the GICC volleyball coach, she secured at least one state championship. Those five decades of success, with 11 championships, have inspired countless teams, including the class of 2022-23, to write their own names in the program's history. And like 50 years of GICC volleyball athletes before them, to finish strong. led to something more major can't stop me now you can't stop me can't stop me now you can't stop me need i remind you in case you forgot you know i'm coming for that number one spot yeah i can't be shocked you know it's level to it yeah the only way to do it is to do it yeah need i remind you in case you forgot you know i'm coming for that number one spot yeah i can't be shocked you you know i i think every year it's it's getting more like, am I gonna do this anymore? You know, I really like coaching. I've always liked sports. I thought sports did a lot for me growing up and it's my payback to sports because I'm competitive, I like it. Um, I like volleyball because it's such a team thing and everybody feels uh, like they belong and that's what you want. People want to feel like they belong. 